approval of the agenda. And if you would, please review the uh, February regular meeting minutes. Recording in progress. Corrections to last month's minutes. I need your minutes to submit. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. That leads us directly into financial matters. Next slide's fine. Okay, so first slide is, should, if anybody's been in meetings before, the slide should look fairly familiar. Um, I've switched, last month I did just the monthly, monthly numbers, but this month I actually did the year-to-date numbers. So for February 2023, we have year-to-date number of $207,002 against a forecast of $85,485. Um, significant contributions to the revenue. Property tax um, was 18414 which I know doesn't sound like a big number, but we only forecasted $87. So it looks good. And we'll see that on a slide coming up. Um, ownership taxes continue to be higher than expected, so they contributed to this number. Uh, ambulance revenue is tracking higher than forecasted, and interest income. Thank you to the Federal Reserve. We have high interest rates, so we actually make money, money, money that we put in Colorado Trust. Next slide. <coughs> expenses. Total forecast for the year is expenses of, I don't know what that number is. Okay, thanks. Anyway, so again, we're looking at an annual number, and what you can see is expenses are a smidgen below what was forecasted. Expenses year-to-date for February 2023 were um, $710,177. That is adjusted by the amounts that we bill Intercanyon per our intergovernmental agreements. So I've adjusted those numbers. Um, some things to note, we'll see it later, but labor expenses are less than anticipated, a little bit less administration, training, prevention, maintenance, and the fire stations all came in under forecast a bit. Next slide. So net income for the year is forecast to be 7,271 positive. <clears throat> the forecast year to date for February is at 503,175. 5, um, this is again adjusted by the billings that we bill to accrue to in county. And question um, that's last year's. So you can see that in 2022 we were also negative for the first couple months, so we would expect that's expected for the first couple months of 2023. Next slide. What are you doing over there, Chief? Oh, I don't know. There, there, is. Is. there we are. I'm going to just get this slide in my pocket with words on it. Property tax revenue. Again, if you look at last year's forecast versus this year's forecast, we are virtually flat. Actually, we're a little less in property tax revenue in 2023 than we were in 2022. Month of February was 18,414. We talked about on a previous slide, $87. Pretty low was the projected for February of 2023. So again, revenue is, is tracking over budget slightly. Um, we'll see an uptick in revenue in uh, March and in July when the bulk of property taxes come in. 
Anybody has any questions, Holly? Next slide. Labor. Labor is, property tax is our biggest revenue number. Labor is our biggest expense number. Um, just, just over 50%, like 53% of the total expenses for the fire department. So the number that you're looking at, 357.164, is year to date for February. 397. Huh? 397.164. Oh, 397.164. Thank you. I have trouble reading and looking at the same time. It's just one of those things. So again, I've adjusted these labor numbers by the expense that we bill in our canyon. Just a reminder for people who haven't been in previous meetings or don't remember, fuel services are billed at 100% to Inner Canyon, prevention services and maintenance are both billed at 50% to Inner Canyon. So these numbers reflect, are lessened by those billings. Okay, next slide. So far this year we haven't had any out of district fires. So there are no, whoops, next slide. Sir, yeah. Oh, I skipped a slide, didn't I? The previous one. Yep, I skipped the previous one. I'm so sorry. There we go. Okay, this is labor without surf and adjusted for built. So it's kind of a repeat of the previous slide, but it would be net of surf if we actually had surf. We've had no out of district fires through February. Do we have any in March, Chief? No, okay. So again, we would expect this number to be less than the forecast year to date. And without, you know, with SURF taken out at zero right now, the numbers are the same. Excellent. SURF wages, basically they're at zero. Um, you can see the uptick in SURF that we'll expect during fire season. Um, looks like in 2022, started about April and just increased all through about September and then kind of leveled off. So we'll expect somewhat of the same pattern this year unless fires are really bad. Next slide. Um, this slide is, is a little weird because it doesn't have all the pieces to it yet. Since we haven't had any out of district fires, there's no surf submitted no surf reimbursed, no surf remaining, and surf expenses are at zero. So the only thing on the slide is the amount for last year's submissions. And if anybody remembers from last meeting, we actually have received the entire million to $71,439 of surf expenses from the state. So this title looks empty for right now. Next slide. Any questions? Uh -huh. Okay, next slide. So expenses for the month of February, shown in your packet, year to date, are $123,968.43. Um, that's what was recorded in the ledger. Actually, expenses are reduced by what we built in our canyon for $109,596.55. And what I need is a motion to approve the expenses for the month ending February 28th, 2023, of 123,968.43, and adjusted expenses of 109,596.55. Any questions? Yes, yeah, I think I understand that. I'll make a motion to approve um, the recorded expenses ending February 28, 2023, of 123,968.43, and the adjusted expenses of 109,596.55. Second. Second. Second by Director Newby. All in favor? Aye. 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 That motion passes. Thank you again. Sure. Uh, we certainly appreciate that. All right, that leads us to, direct, uh, to Chief Ware's report. Much like the financials, February is usually a fairly 
slow year or slow month. Um, follow the normal trend of being slow with calls. It's also a good time for firefighters and EMTs and program leads to catch up on projects and prepare for the upcoming summer season. The chipping program uh, opened at the beginning of the month and it uh, is pretty exciting. It opened up the community ambassador program first and then the program has opened up to uh, everyone else and the program filled up very rapidly. Um, at one point in time, um, looking at the metrics, there were 70 people that registered within the first 10 minutes. Um, obviously the program successful. Um, they ended up with a few more than the original plan, the 400, closer to 500, just because of how quickly they were coming in and we wanted to see what we can do. Uh, we've actually got to, got to talk to the board about one of the things we have to increase in capacity with that later. Currently, um, address is being sorted and groups are being assembled. Seasonal employees will start the first part of May and then we'll start the chipping at the uh, end of May. And the uh, district is also working with the designated election official to uh, set up for the upcoming election in May. We have six candidates running for three seats and we will be smoothing out some of the uh, things from the process last year to make voting easier for residents and more to come on that. Operations, volunteer firefighters had 387 hours of staffing at station one. We did average 4.2 members for, per call, which is up. That's pretty exciting. It's, uh, and a lot of that's just the, uh, the volunteer participation has really been great. Only 18% of the calls overlapped and the average response time was 10, 12. Everything else is pretty normal. Um, the incidents are down here, nothing out of the ordinary. The one thing we did have is Platt Canyon did have a wildland fire. There was an individual burning piles outside of prescription and he chose to burn them during he was well above the wind threshold and uh, fire did exactly what fire does when it reacts to wind and topography and very dry grass and they ripped off an acre and a half. Luckily, it was very close to the station, so they were able to throw a lot of stuff at it, and they, they caught it. I think you guys saw the uh, thank you letter from Black Canyon. Yes. We did send a fair amount of resources over there, and they were pretty appreciative. Uh, we only had 98 calls for the month, which is down a little bit, but uh, about normal for February. Uh, mutual aid was down. Transports, again, are trending down. Uh, firefighters had 385 hours of training for the month. The Fire Academy is working well with recruits moving into the wildland component of uh, Academy. Fire Prevention, um, Fire Marshal completed 47 inspections for the month of February, and the Deputy Fire Marshal position, uh, the goal is to have that filled by the end of March. Fleet facilities, while all of our apparatus are in service, we have had a few hiccups at the stations. We had the well pump fail at Station 2, uh, we had that replaced. Bay door in Station 3 failed. It just happened to be the same door that somebody hit a couple years ago and somebody backed into it. They're replacing panels on that. Boiler in Station 1 has, we've been battling that. We've gone without heat for a good chunk of the month, but I think that's repaired. Our new SCBAs, they just arrived and we are getting the vendor to do an in-service training and they should be in-service by the end of the month. And we've also had some of our air monitors, they reached end of life and uh, Captain Weinfeld's working on replacements, so we should have uh, some new air monitors. And that's about it. All right, thank you, Chief. Moving along, then, that takes us to item number eight, old business. Uh, Ken, would you like to uh, provide us any updates on the outreach committee? No, I don't really have anything at this time other than the website is up and running. All right, that's exciting. And if uh, you guys haven't had a chance, please explore the website. And uh, hopefully you'll find it as as uh, enlightening as we with the, uh, with the startup of our new effort in a community outreach. And please give feedback as well. Perfect. And how would you like them to go about that, Chief? Um, info at oakcreekfire.org. There are a couple buttons. But uh, yeah, please give feedback on the website. We've already found a couple things that didn't work quite as planned. Um, but uh, yeah, as is appropriate. Say, it's been out for a week. Yeah. Secret <laughs> with it. All right, consolidation committee update. Chief, with the um, things that we went through at the last consolidation committee, I think you would be in the best position to provide the update. Um, we've launched that website with all the facts on it, uh, mountainfireresources.com. We've just been talking about it. It's kind of moving forward. It's, it's I'm not going to say status quo because we're fielding tons of questions. We're getting a lot of questions and feedback from the website, which is working out well. Um, that's kind of where it's at. I think if our... Uh, when we get down to old business study session, I think we'll have a lot to talk about during that study session. 
Okay. Any questions of the chief regarding the consolidation committee? And that moves us to our third item under new business, the study session. As was mentioned a couple months ago, a motion was made by Director Newby about creating a study session. Um, we are going to, we have finally been able to put everybody's schedules together and we are going to have that a week from this Monday, March 27th at 6 p.m. It will take place here in the training room and uh, we would uh, appreciate anybody's interest to come and um, watch the things that we're going to be talking about. It's important for us to all get on the same page, especially as we're moving into some of these very important issues in regard to um, the consolidation and some of the strategic planning that is necessary for us as we move forward. Director Bixley, it's actually two weeks. Uh, two, yeah, a week from this upcoming yeah. Monday. Yeah, I'm sorry. I could have been more clear. But me. it is <laughs> March 28th. 7th. March 27th. And then we should mention that while it's a public meeting, it's not open to public comment. Yes, this is, you can watch us as we go through and plan. All right. March 27th, 6 p.m. All right, that leads us into new business. Chief, would you like to start us off on, um, of course, this new chipper? Yeah, so what, what we're talking about here is, um, I kind of sent the email to the board right before we opened the chipping program. So I guess, full story, uh, beginning of the year, we had a couple grants out to try to increase capacity on the chipping program. We had one grant for personnel. It was going to cover two seasonal personnel for two years, and then another grant for some capacity building, which is equipment. We got the capacity building, which is equipment. We did not get the grant for the personnel. That happened, I think it was literally four days before we opened the chipping program. So we were trying to figure out exactly what we're going to do with that. And after talking to uh, Moses and uh, a number of the wildland guys, what we, what we wanted, we, we, we got a grant for $75,000 for the capacity building. It's a matching grant. What I think would work is to per go ahead and purchase that truck. We, you know, we got the money sitting there at 75000 So what I'd like to ask the board to do is spend up to 150, obviously with the match, because we'll what we'll have to do is we'll have to purchase that for the full amount, then we'll receive the 75000 I think we'll come in underneath that. Um, and with the second truck, our goal is we should be able to increase our capacity with our wildland fire module. When they're ahead on projects, when they've got some extra time, which is rare, but when they have it, we'll be able to use that second truck and have a second outfit out chipping. We've, we've, uh, Inner Canyon has a chipper as well as us. And the big problem is in the beginning, we just broadcast all the chips. Now, almost everybody wants all the biomass removed, and the chip truck is our huge bottleneck. The guys can fill the chip truck when they're humming in about 45 minutes. They can, and one address that meets everything with the five by five piles at 15 piles, that's almost an entire truck. We have, and actually we just got it today, it's not ready for the board meeting, we have an agreement with, the, with Jefferson County to start dumping biomass at all their slash collection sites, which is gonna cut our turnaround times nice. in half. That's but we still have the bottleneck of, of that, that chip truck. The other thing about the chip truck is, if you guys remember, we bought it about five years ago, a surplus, it was a 2004. Um, we just wanted to see how it would work. It's worked out really well. It is almost a 20-year-old truck, so we do have a few hiccups with it. And that is the, as I always talk about, redundancy and single points of failure. That is the one single point of failure in the entire chipping program. If that truck happens to blow up tomorrow, we're completely out of business until we get another one. So we, we got this grant, and what I'd like to ask the board to do is go ahead and approve 152 by said truck. And like I said, we've already spec some out. They should be right around 120. Um, we should come in well under it. Um, uh, fleet manager Hedjanowski is already on top of that. We've, we've sourced a couple of them. All right, so the chief's asking for the board to make a motion for the purchase of a new chipper truck up to $150,000 that involves a 50-50 match from the Colorado Forest Service. Can I have a motion made? Motion, I make a motion to approve the, the chipper truck up to $150,000. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. That motion passes. <clears throat> and I told you we get through this fast. And uh, <laughs> this is, again, one of the 
most exciting things that we as a board can do, and that's to welcome new firefighters into this wonderful fire department. And today you are all our witness to the swearing in of Firefighter Moses and Firefighter McConaughey, and we are very excited to do this. I know Director um, uh, Wagner and myself have shared the responsibilities here, but this is really um, uh, an important time for these two firefighters and it's an important time for this fire department as we continue to grow. You heard the chief mention in his report about the, the amount of uh, involvement that the firefighters are having and it's showing that we are able to bring and to bring in new firefighters and to cultivate this culture that we have here in Elk Creek and, and to further benefit the citizens by providing a greater opportunity for emergency service. So, if I may, my, uh, could we have Firefighter McConaughey and Firefighter Moses step forward, please? So, welcome. Can you get to stand in front of everybody in front of the Chief's new contraption? You're being here on the uh, to broadcast across the world. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the road and I'm going to make it very simple for you guys because it can be it can be challenging even for the person reading it. So alright. I state your name. Well, please, let's start again. Please raise your right hand. Follow me. I state your name. I, Ben Moses. Do solemnly swear to do my duty. Do solemnly swear to do my duty. Do solemnly swear to do my duty. And you guys can do this in unison. <laughs> <laughs> As a firefighter of the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. As a firefighter of the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. To the best of my duty. To the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. To serve my commanding officers with respect and dignity. To serve my commanding officers with respect and dignity. <laughs> and to serve the citizens of the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. And to serve the citizens of the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. With compassion, courage, and integrity. With compassion, courage, and integrity. And to uphold the laws and constitution of the United States of America. And to uphold the laws and constitution of the United States of America. The state of Colorado, the state of Colorado, and the Elk Creek Fire Protection District, and the Elk Creek Fire Protection District. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations to you both. Thank you. I hope I made it pretty easy. <laughs> All right, now this is the most exciting time. Ben Moses will be by his wife. Yes, exactly. You want to introduce your family? This is my wife Janice, my daughter Ember, and that's my son Rowan. <laughs> you look good. <laughs> I already did it twice. All right, 
exciting, exciting. That leads us out of item 9 into item 10, citizens issues. Do we have any issues from the floor? Yes, sir. Not an issue, but thank you. Um, so I looked at the new website. You guys already have all kinds of great stuff up there, including election information with the absentee ballot stuff. And I just wanted to thank the whole team, the, the department, the board for doing that. It's, um, it's really cool. And the fact that you've got absentee ballots again already up there so that citizens who there are more interested now because of the survey, by the way, um, so they can all see this and uh, be part, of, feel like they're part of the community maybe even without coming to this. So thank you. You guys are great. Thank you for those kind of words. And thank you to the committee and to the chief for um, putting that all together. Thank you. Other issues? Yes, sir. So I did on the website, there's a lot of good information on there. The uh, transparency notice is still not being repaired, but... Uh, okay, we'll make a note of that, the that. transparency um, note on the website. So, in looking at the, um, at, the, at the income statement for the end of the year, I still can't find out where any of this money supposedly coming in from other fire districts is coming into the, into the income statement. Can you say where that is? I'm not sure you would, Mike. I'm not sure what you're saying. So these IGAs, <coughs> it, it said that on these intergovernment agreements, there's invoices going out to other districts and money coming in. Yes. Where does it come in? It comes in to a receivable account, basically. It's, it's not on an income account that I can see. No, because basically we bill them for it. And then they pay it. And where does it show up on the income? It's, it's an offset to salary. Offset to salary? Yes. Okay. Offset so to so salary. on uh, Gap County, you can't bring money in unless it's coming into a into a income. Um, so it has to be somewhere in this in this line, or your or the uh, the audit's going to catch that. And I don't know what they're going to say. I, I haven't think the audit last year was passed. Did there, was that noted in the audit? Is so the audit the audit's going on right now? I'm assuming it hasn't started. It hasn't started. Yet. It, is it going to be done on time this year, June? It's going to be done in May. So it'll be it's filed June. in June. It's usually filed in like. September or October, so I don't get to see it. I think later. last year it was filed earlier. It was filed on time last year. Yeah. It was filed on time last year, so um, our plan is to file last year, so I didn't see it by the end of June last year. You get it, it'd be nice. <clears throat> and then the other issue is I think we had a, uh, our mill expired in 2022, at 2.5 mill that was passed in. 2013 should have expired in 22. No, it doesn't expire till 23. 23. Yeah. It expires at the end of this year. It expired in 22. It was You're a ten collecting it for 22 in 2023. It was a 10 year mill. Right, 2013 mm -hmm. through 2022. No, 2023. Because we didn't start That's collecting what? till 2013. Till 2022, January. <clears throat> taxes are collected in arrears, so you're tax you're collecting 2022's taxes this year. So effectively, our tax rate this year is right now. If nothing happens. It's a 10. Hmm. Tell you what, we'll look into that. that? So if nothing happens. We just did some. <clears throat> we just did some investigation yeah. into that, and we were given direction. So. Our legal counsel said it mm -hmm. expires at the end of this year. We, there, were, there had been questions in regard to the um, unique verbiage that was created when this passed, and we have been addressing this. Uh, it was brought up as a board, and we've had our counsel look at it, but we can certainly have them re-look at it. But we just received, was it last month or the month before, an update um, to the end of 2023 Correct. is what is what they told us. 
is we, that you're collecting those taxes from uh, 2022. I understand the process <clears throat> this year. So a couple things are going to happen. I mean, next year, if nothing happens, or or uh, mm -hmm. mill is dead for 2024, well, for the collecting of 2023 is, is at 10%. Our, uh, our um, assessments are coming in in May, and by all measure, our assessments are going to go through the roof. So who knows how that's going to affect our tax base. I would expect that it's not going to be more. I think your budget is based upon 12 mil, not 10. The budget's based on what the Jeff Code tells us we're going to get. And no, I mean, I mean your, tw your 2023 budget. <coughs> what we have right now. Right, is based on 12 mil. Your next budget is going to be based on 10 unless you get this 16 that you're going to ask for. That's a 60% increase in our taxes. If you go on after 16 mil, that's probably the highest mil of anybody anywhere. Don't you agree? So, uh, your question though is the sunsetting of the mill. Was it 2022 or was it 2023? It's 2022. Okay, you're exactly. You're saying was it 2022? Um, our council said 2023. Will the chief will um, readdress that, and we'll let you know what we find next month. So good, thanks. That's all I got. Okay. Any other issues from the floor? Any other issues? Hearing none. This is one of the fastest meetings we've had in a couple of years. In a long time. Um, before we close, though, before we call adjournment, I again just want to add con a, a, a sincere congratulations to Firefighter Moses and Firefighter McConaughey. Thank you both. Welcome, welcome to the Elk Creek family. Thank you. All right, so uh, here, no other citizens' issues. We will call for an adjournment. May I get a motion? Second. Make a motion to all right. Okay, second. <laughs> <laughs> so the motion or the meeting ended at 639. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you.